What's up guys and welcome to a very special Thailand herping vlog. In this video, we go on a mission to see if every snake bites. So make sure to stay until the end when we try it with a Malayan pit viper, the snake responsible for the most bites in Thailand. All right, what's up guys? And welcome to a slightly different video. I mean slightly because we're basically gonna be doing the same thing as normal. We're here in Hua Hin, basically in my back garden and we're gonna be looking for snakes. But this time we're gonna be looking for snakes with a purpose. And that purpose is going to be to find out, do snakes bite? Because a common conception is that snakes are defensive, snakes are aggressive. And if you get near them or let alone touch them, that they're gonna bite you. So in this video, we're gonna catch every snake we see and see if we can get it to bite. And of course, if we find something venomous, we're gonna use the good old boot in a, a tongs technique. But I don't wanna take all the bites myself, so I brought in a couple friends of mine. We got Harold, who Let's you'll go. recognize from the channel, and Keith has also <laughs> featured on the channel before. And we might get bitten by some snakes. Let's, let's see what happens. Hopefully not. <laughs> okay, we just road cruised our uh, first snake of the night. If you take a look down here, we have one which will be very familiar to those of you who follow my channel regularly. This is Muhot's kukri snake, Oligodon Muhotai, Cambodian kukri snake, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm going to pick it up without saying much more. For some of you, the word kukri snake, oh, come here, may ring bells. And uh, I'm not necessarily, these are, kind of have a reputation for being bitey. Let's keep a close eye on its head. But it seems like this one, does not seem interested in biting at all. As you can see, it's digging its head like into me, but that's more of like a burrowing mechanism to try and get into crevices and to sort of yeah, like hook itself on. I don't know exactly what the purpose is, but you can see its main defensive technique it's doing right now is coiling its tail to reveal the uh, watermelon venter, which is uh, definitely not biting. So. Yeah, the first snake of the night, one I was potentially expecting to be bitten by, is not biting at all. And, and let's do a final kind of test. This is the, what you have to do to trigger a true biting response in snakes, is to kind of grab them behind the neck. Put pressure on the neck. Hold them by, yep, absolutely nothing. Seems like this snake just has no intention whatsoever to bite, which shows you that uh, even Oligodon, a genus which has a reputation for being bitey, and believe me, if these did bite, even a tiny, tiny snake like this, it would create a little bit of a sharp pain. They've got some sharp teeth in the back of their mouth, and uh, it really can cut through skin. Even one this size would create a little small pool of blood around the bite. But yeah, this snake, despite being grabbed, manhandled, all of the above, just prefers to coil its tail as a defensive tactic. So let's move on, see if we can find anything else, and. Uh, let this little fella get back to his, his cruising. Okay, so uh, we were just like um, looking at the Muhotai after filming and we just spotted a vine snake in the bushes, well, in the grass here right afterwards. So uh, another snake straight away, another one to look at. I'm gonna go in and bring it out. Just, uh, I'll just let it get away. But yeah, let me bring it quickly to you so you can see this right here. Oh, let me kill this light. This is a Haitila Fusca. And uh, well, as for the video and the point of this video, let's do the, all the things. Like I don't want to over harass the snake, of course, but the point of this video is education. So I'm going to do it just this once. I'm pressing right on the part of a snake, which usually triggers a bite response. And oh, it did open its mouth, but uh, no strike, just kind of responded in a, so I'm holding it behind the neck, no mouth open. Well, I'm not counting this one as a bite, but uh, it's definitely acting defensively. It doesn't like being manhandled like this. And yeah, now it's, <laughs> this one's, this one's, let's see, will it get me? Nope, not interested in biting. A lot of show, a little puff, maybe some fake strikes, but uh, when, when push comes to shove, look, not interested in biting whatsoever. And uh, yeah, a little bit more defensive than usual. I will say 99% of the time you catch this species, it won't even puff up its body. And um, I've never been bitten by this species. So this would have been a first, but you know, couldn't get it to bite. See, nothing at all, just keeps going. Well, 
That was an interesting experience. We caught one of the more defensive uh, Ahetila fusca I've ever seen. But come and get a close up of that on the side. I've just spotted quite a large bronzeback in the bushes here. And this time, because uh, often these only bite when you first grab them, I'm going to ask you to come into the bushes with me. So I'll bring it out pretty quickly. But there's a big uh, pictus in here. These can be a little flighty, so I'm going to go in for the grab quite fast. So this is a big pictus if I've ever seen one. So this is Dendra. Oh, he's having a, having a heart attack. This is the painted bronzeback Dendrolaphus pictus. Will be a very familiar species to anyone who lives out in Asia or has spent time looking for snakes in Asia. These are quite common in their various countries. Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia, you know, all of Indochina and way into Indonesia and stuff. These guys are pretty common, but uh, another snake to see if it's going to bite. These are one which are quite hit and miss. Generally, I consider this species to be of non-defensive, um, or at least non-defensive in the striking sense. Sometimes they'll puff up their neck to reveal bluish coloration, but uh, sometimes a good way to get these to bite, uh, well, is not handling them. Like handling them like this, they don't really tend to pay much attention to you, like even if you were to touch their neck. So yeah, gonna do the usual thing of often holding a snake like this will make it open its mouth. It will make it, sorry, I've had my light on. It will make it uh, act in a defensive manner, but this one seems to, again, have absolutely no intention. Now we'll try another thing, which is waving my hand in front of its face. Sometimes they'll uh, react defensively and strike at the hand. Oh, yeah, 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 this is, this is potential. See, now I've like triggered it. It's focused on my hand. No, absolutely no intention to bite whatsoever. But yeah, this one is uh, not interested in biting at all. And I'm very happy we've got three species in quick succession. And uh, as we've seen, not a single one of them has been inclined to bite whatsoever. So we're learning a lot about snakes in this video, but yeah, painted bronze back. Let's set this one back in the bushes. Three species, three snakes so far, none of which uh, were inclined to bite whatsoever, no matter what we did. So that's kind of giving you a good idea of what snakes are like already. But we, we kind of do for our own enjoyment, want to get a few of the more bitey species in this video. So uh, let's see what we can do. And next time I'm going to get these guys to catch it, get them a bit involved. So we've just spotted in this empty swimming pool in this abandoned house, a little plumbious water snake. You can see it down there. Keith, you have to like grab, grab, okay? Big snatch. Oh, look at that spider. Big snatch. Go. Okay, hold on. <laughs> what the hell, Keith? The boss. Take number two, we just spotted a second one. This pool is crawling with pl Plumbia. There's a big pond around the corner. Take two. And they keep falling in here. And yeah, let's see if uh, our main man, Keith, can, can redeem himself from that epic gargantuan fail we just witnessed. Grab. Grab. Now. Where is it? Bruh. Underneath it. I can see it. Are you a, are you a Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. Okay, so after Keith's two disastrous attempts, I realized that this plumbia is actually going inside this rubber thing. Here, look. And we don't even need to grab it out of the water because we've got it coming out for free. Hold on, come down and take a look. Take a close look. <laughs> okay, now, um, does somebody else want to do the honors of handling this plum beer for the video? Keith? Okay. The floor is yours. You've humiliated yourself twice on camera already. It's time to redeem yourself. Thank you. Take kick. the plumb. Okay. And now hold it properly, like with two hands. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah, okay. We have our first biter of the day. Let's get yeah. a close up of that. Let's get a close up. Oh, look at that. This is deserved. Blood is coming already. Oh my God. All right, now this is obviously a harmless species. They have rear Ooh. fangs, but the venom won't have any effect on a human. But quite sharp, because these guys catch frogs and fish. And look at him, he's having a... He's got his white mouth. Hold on, let me take it around this side. Good old chump there. Let me take a look at this. Wow. 
Stay still, Keith. It's got its mouth, like its jaws like dislocated, like it's trying to eat Keith's entire ham for dinner. But sorry, mate, those sausage fingers are too big for you. <laughs> All right, Keith, I think you've suffered enough for now. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. But, uh... <laughs> okay, guys, first biting snake is in Hydrus, or Hypsoscopus plumbia. These goofy little water snakes, or yellow-bellied water snake, as some people call them. He's scammed that bit, all right. Yeah, he has. Oh, let's take a look at that. Blood is pouring. Maybe I should, like, edit, like, more blood in the thumbnail. Oh. Mm. Yeah, nah, I can just do it for you. <laughs> there we go. Well, four snake species caught tonight, and uh, we've got the first one which bites. So if you see in Hydrus Hypsoscopus plumbia, sorry, in Thailand, just know that it will bite, it may hurt, but it's completely harmless. So, yeah, we can let this one go now. All right, well, I just spotted a, uh, another snake um, before we even could get to our car, but I'm afraid that this is not, oh, oh, oh. Wait, how do I catch these? Okay, I think I got it. This is quite a big one, so. All right, I believe it or not, guys, yes, this thing in my hand is not an earthworm. This is a snake. And this is a Brahmini blind snake, which I guess most people in the reptile word world would have heard of because it's, I mean, it's distributed in basically all five major continents, uh, introduced to many populous areas of the world, including Europe and yet parts of the United States. And yeah, well, we just caught it rummaging around in what looked like part of an ant or termite nest, which certainly um, demonstrates their lifestyle, which is living under the earth, feeding on the eggs of ants and termites. And no, this snake does not bite. Uh, I don't think these blind snakes ever bite. But you know what they do is smell really bad. And obviously you can't, I can't transmit smell through the video, thankfully for you, but this snake does, oh, it does not smell good right now. Keith, Keith, have a whiff of, wait, Harry, have a whiff of this. Mm, it's quite burn-like. I mean, Harry has no sense of smell. Hold no, on, let's flip this around, let's flip this around. Putrid. Keith, have a whiff. Putrid. <laughs> Do you guys think the next video should be like, does every snake stink? <laughs> Could we do a, does every snake smell like ass video? Because it's kind of a similar theme. Like not all the snakes we've caught tonight stunk like ass, but a couple of them <laughs> did for sure. The Plumbia and the blind snake, man. That wasn't good, but uh, yeah, we're out on the road, driving around, looking for snakes crossing. Let's hope we get that venomous species we're looking for. All right, so uh, we just road cruised a snake, but it's not the one we're looking for, but it is uh, one that anyone who watches my channel frequently will be very familiar with, similar to many of the others we saw in this video. This is Birdmore's Keeled Slug Snake, and quite a nicely banded one as well, Parius Birdmorei. And these are a uh, completely harmless, non-venomous species which cruises around in these dry lowlands eating slugs and snails. And as you can see, this species always has absolutely no intention to bite. In fact, the entire Pariatidae group, I've never seen one member of the slug snakes ever try to bite. And if you take a look at their head, you can kind of see they are so cute. I mean, look at that little face. Almost no defensive actions from species like this. They don't really do anything and the chance of getting bitten by one of these is uh, so incredibly low, I don't even need to mention it. Do you want to mind just doing the sort of litmus test of just pressing a bit on its neck? Yeah, these. We could do this all day forever and we'd never get a biting response from this species. Biting is just not part of its defensive mechanisms whatsoever. Its defensive mechanisms include coiling up in a ball and what it's doing right now, which is trying to escape. They don't even smell these ones, so they, uh, they pass the stink test. All right, so we're back out the following night and uh, we just figured we'd film if we get what we're looking for, the Malayan pit viper and, uh, or any other interesting snake. And I actually have just found an interesting snake. If you look over here, I'll just put my light on for a moment. In the bush there is a juvenile small banded cookery snake, which is just resting on this plant. Yeah, you can see it very obviously. Now I'm going to turn my light off. You just hold the light there and I'm going to catch it because, well, that's the point of this video. It's, even though I would never usually catch one of these, every snake needs to be caught. And, uh, wow, come, come look at this. Look at this beautiful little snake. You know, small banded cookeries are one of the most common snakes we get in our area. And these have a reputation for being very bitey. 
and amazingly it's not biting at all. This species has a reputation for being very bitey but I'm putting pressure on the neck here which usually triggers a bite response and look I'm grabbing it by the back of the neck. <laughs> I mean I was expecting to get bitten by this. I was mentally preparing myself to have this species really large teeth cut me up but I can't believe it. We found a small banded cookery snake one of the most notoriously defensive and uh, painful snakes to be bitten by, painful, non-venomous, harmless species in Thailand. And it's just sitting there on my hand, looking like an ornate big piece of china. Yeah, come and take a little close up before I let this one go, because this thing is just gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. Okay, so <laughs> Malayan pit vipers are usually the most common snake in our area. And I did not want to finish this video without trying will it bite on a Malayan pit viper. And of course, it took us the longest time we've ever gone in this area without seeing a Malayan pit viper. But finally tonight, after a little while of road cruising, come take a look. We just got this adorable little Malayan pit viper on the road. And I'm telling you, man, I've never been so happy to see one of these since the very first time I saw one in Thailand. So great. Come around a bit more around this side. It looks really good from around here. Yeah, before we conduct the uh, final experiment of this video, let's just bask in the beauty of this incredible animal for a second. Okay, take this back and keep an eye on it. I'm wearing my sliders. And that's because my boot <laughs> is right here. And we are going to test if Malayan pit vipers bite when trodden on. And this one, as you can clearly see already, is quite riled up. It's in defensive posture. It's not trying to get away. I've hooked it a couple times on the road to stop it from getting off before we started rolling. But let's see. I'm just, I'm being gentle, but applying enough pressure to it. Well, you can see that. Did it bite then? Setting on its neck. Take a good look there. There we go. And uh, I think that's an adequate test. Maybe you can see in the video, did it bite there? I don't know, I was blocked out by the shoe. It looked like its head whipped around. But uh, as you saw, it's heading towards you by the way. <laughs> you might wanna come around here for a second. <laughs> And of course, remember, before we wrap up this video, this is not a rule. Doing this with one individual of any of the species we've seen here means almost nothing. Of all the species we found in this video, most of them I've had try to bite once, twice, or multiple times. But in general, this is a pretty good example of what snakes are like. Snakes very rarely bite. And especially if you're like respectful of their space or even pick them up very gently, especially, well, I'm not advocating you pick up Malayan pit vipers, but. You know, if you pick up a Malayan pit viper on your tongs on a hook or something, it's not gonna come flying at your face trying to bite you. The vast majority of snakes in Thailand are not gonna behave that way in the slightest. Snakes are very docile, very pleasant animals and have a reputation which is just not fair to what they're like. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys next week. Yeah, yeah.